Solutions Architect, Worldwide Public Sector, AWS to the podium. I'm already here. All right, um, I'm standing for you for lunch. So, um, yeah, my name is Steve Sofian. I'm a solution architect for public sector. Um, I've been in, with AWS for about five years now, uh, mainly covering the central government, um, government agencies, and uh, the DLCs. So, for, thank you for coming to this session. Uh, it's about using AWS accounts at scale. Um, uh, the key thing is about using AWS bandings only. So let's see. So let's, this is a, the session agenda for today. So let's start by defining what's the problem we're trying to solve. And I'll give you an overview of what is an AWS landing zone. And subsequently, let's dive deeper into the components of a landing zone. And subsequently, lastly, um, you see in terms of what you can do for the next steps. So, Typically, when you start with AWS, you start by creating an AWS account. So this is the highest level of separation um, of, of, of your resources. So it provides you with a security boundary uh, in terms of all the workloads within that account will stay in that account. And also, like for all the API services within AWS, we do have uh, limits. So you can have to track the limits within that account as well. And an AWS account basically is the only way and the true way of or building separation. So, so there's uh, some charges that you are not able to tag, for example, um, like for example, the transfer charges. Within an AWS account, basically you have that line item basically for, specifically for that particular workload. If you have multi -work, multiple workloads in an AWS account, there's no way for you to break down the transfer charges. That's one of the key things. So typically for a customer, they start with one account. right? They start deploying VPCs into that account, provisioning resources, and there are other customers that actually goes to a thousand or hundreds of accounts. So, so there are some sort of automation that you have to do in, if you want to provision those type of accounts because you have to baseline the accounts. But typically, customers as of today, um, they are right in between these two models. So uh, maybe you can think of like, why do I need to go, why can't can, why can I just use one account? Yes, you can, right? You can start provisioning one VPC, provisioning all the resources into a single account. But subsequently, as more and more resources being provisioned, it was, it's very hard for you to manage the environment because there are multiple workloads, there are multiple uh, security posture that you require for the different application workloads. It's just very hard to manage. It's possible, but it's just hard to manage. So why one isn't enough? You have many teams. You have more, many teams working on that particular account itself. So some teams like are uninterested in permission, and you want to do this, and another team want to do something differently. And different workloads might need different isolation, right? Um, based on certain data classification, for example, I'm more sensitive workload, I want to isolate it in a different way from, a, 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 let's say, a website. So it's, it's a very different security posture for different workloads. You want to have security controls, right? Um, I do not want to have another team to mess up my my work was in a particular VPCs, and, and how do you actually manage those security controls around those resources? And lastly, different teams and different products have different processes. And last but not least, each project, I need to charge back. So like I say, within a single AWS account, yes, um, those items that can be tagged, you can do cost allocation tags to it, but there are line items that can't be so-called tagged, or you can't have break broken down into multiple charges like, the, like your data transfer charges. So what's the pros and cons of having multiple accounts? One, you have complete security and resource isolation, right? So basically, everything within that account belongs to that account, belongs to that particular workload. And anything happens to that account, the, middle, the impact is much smaller because we have a smaller blast radius now. And of course, lastly, billing. This is always one of the key things because for IT department, um, many different workloads running on AWS, I need to charge back to the different departments. How do I do that? But of course, while you're doing multiple accounts, there are certain challenges as well, because how do I do aggregation distribution? Uh, one thing, how do I aggregate all the logs? How do I aggregate all the permissions? How do I aggregate all um, the bills together? And how do I distribute those reports back to the individual team or user? 
with that, that's also set up an operation overhead because you need someone to go and create accounts for the, for the team, uh, to set up different identities and permissions for that team. So what problem are we trying to solve? As your accounts grows, right, inconsistencies start to pop up. Um, this is where it's very hard for you to manage because you have many different teams doing things differently, or even worse of all, many teams doing the same thing differently. So you start to see a lot of inconsistency. So how do you actually manage and control those in, um, standardized uh, and a baseline for those accounts? You do not want to end up like a ball of spaghetti. You, know, you do not know where is what, who is doing what, where, why. So what is it that we need today? We want to have some sort of control, but we do not want to be the blocker to, to teams that who wants to provision resources. Um, but still, we need to have some sort of control to manage those accounts. So what are the goals that we are trying to achieve? It has to be automated, because as you know, when you're provisioning one account, you're doing setup up things manually. For a single workload, single account is pretty easy. But if, as your accounts grow to hundreds or thousands, then it's, you need some sort of automation to do that. It has to be scalable. Um, sorry, we want account. Um, we want to be able to wrap so-called repeatable uh, process across hundreds or even thousands of accounts. And you want to make it easy for, for users to actually build up the resources. We, we as an IT team, we do not want to be the blockers. Right? So we want to make it self-service and make it very easy to use. We want to, be, we want to have guardrails, but we, want, we do not want to be a blockers as well. Right? Uh, we want to enable the, the, the users to innovate and build on AWS, but at the same time, we need to have some guardrails, but we do not want to be a bottleneck to those processes as well. It has to be auditable. Right? We need to know who is doing what within the account, what can they do? Um, if uh, there's anything goes wrong, we must be able to so-called to, uh, to identify and, and remediate. And it has to be flexible, right? So if one account is easy, um, subsequently as you grow, uh, different processes come in, different workloads comes in, uh, this baseline has to be flexible. We must be able to change this baseline to support what is required by the business. So that all comes to what is a landing zone. A landing zone basically is a collection of best practices that we have collected over the years with, while we are working with the customers. Uh, it has structure in terms of how do you provision accounts, how do you build out the account structure um, that is logical to you. Right? There's no best or uh, right or wrong way, but what is logical to you when you build up the account structure? How many OUs do I need? Uh, what kind of co policies do I need on those accounts? As you deploy workloads onto AWS or within your application itself, you will, should be able to identify certain patterns. Like how, do I, how is the, 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 the application being used? How is the network environment is being developed? Or there must be patterns. And also, we want to follow certain standards. For example, if like my environment, I want to be, or I want it to comply with CIS benchmarks. So those are the standards that you need to identify. It has to be ad adaptable. Right? Um, as you grow, the processes will change, the baseline will change, the security questions will change, so it has to be adaptable. And we want to, at the same time, provide governance uh, onto these accounts. Last but not least, in order for me to do a repeatable process, I want to be, it to be automated. And I want to do infrastructure as code so such that I can version my code as I know for the different baseline as I grow, I know what has changed along the time. So what are some of the components of a landing zone? Sorry. So, are this, so we started with AWS organization. This is a product feature within AWS itself. This is a feature that we developed based on customer feedback as such that I have grown to a lot of accounts, but there's no easy way for, you, for me to manage. I want to baseline these accounts. What, how what can I do? So this is where the AWS organizations come in. It allows you to do a hierarchy of accounts, right, by developing and creating different OUs within AWS organizations. It allows you to apply security policies on to those accounts as well. You can create security policies on the OU itself, so whatever accounts that is created under that OU will inherit all the permissions. So for example, the set of services I will not allow you to, to use within that account, I can actually control it within the security policy. 
you know, building visibility, all the AWS accounts usage will actually flow back to the a master payer account. So you will have one single bill to pay, but you have clarity in terms of what each individual account is using as well. So this is a sample account structure. So typically, you have a dev environment, you have a prod environment, and uh, within a traditional IT center, uh, same thing, you have certain shared services or common services that we use. At the same time, I want to have a, a central logging account um, because I want to collect all the logs from all the different accounts centrally as such that I can, I'm able to identify, I'm able to so-called remediate if, if there's any event happening. So this is something that you want to do. Um, typically, there's an InfoSec account as well. This is where you provision the users um, in terms of how they do cross-account access because we have to manage the identities. Um, instead of having to have manage identities in every single account, I want to manage it centrally. The users lock in centrally, and they do a cross-account access to those different accounts. So everything starts with account structure. Next, we go to identity access management. Once you provision the account, I need to create an identity for the user to access. So what are the things that you need to set in terms of the foundation for this IAM? You want to create roles. It can be based on certain job functions. Um, um, for example, uh, uh, a power user, uh, a reader, or a full administrator. So you have to create those uh, roles. Typically, for an organization that we have a, some sort of a directory, very most commonly it's active directory. So how do I want to federate? Do I want to federate with uh, my existing on-prem directory? Um, if you do, then basically your users will log in using their uh, existing credentials, but you need to map the roles in terms of uh, what is the IAM roles that they are provisioning. Last, um, next will be IAM users. So typically for a single account, yes, you will leverage on IAM users, but as your account grows, you, it's very hard for you to manage individual IAM users in each individual account. So this is where you, what we recommend is try to limit your use on IAM account. Uh, if you do so, uh, remember to rotate your keys because for each IAM users, you have an access key. And a lot of times, um, customer account got compromised because they lost this key. Whoever get hold of this key actually can access the AWS account. Right? You want to enable MFA as well uh, to factor authentication on that account. And each users and roles will be mapped to a policies. Right? Always use um, AWS managed policies to start off with. Uh, limit the, the use of inline policies on each individual role or permissions. And lastly, you want to do encryption. And this is where we provide a key management service. Um, you want to create a CMK for every service that you use and apply those keys onto the service that you, that you are provisioning. Next, network design. So I should start build out your VPC you will know in terms of what type of parents that do I need. For example, I have a VPC that is host hosting a secure workload only uh, that does not allow in an internet gateway, for example. I need to know um, to enforce that each workload deploys on, on an AWS, on a VPC, it has to be multi-ACs because I want to achieve HA, I want to have a DR on the application itself. You need to know the different subnets that you need. Uh, whether it's public routable uh, or privately routable back to the on-prem. You need to know what's the ingress and egress points. So in the example earlier, I said, if you have a secure workload that is intranet only, you will not have an internet gateway attached to the VPC. Right? You only have a VGW that's attached back to the direct connect, back to the on-prem data center. You need to know your narrow path. How does each VPC connecting to each other or communicating, communicating with each other? Um, whether it's through uh, uh, VPC peering or through direct connect or through VPN, you need to know how these VPCs is, 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 is using the network. Next is the security and visibility. As you grow your accounts, from one account is easy for you to manage, but what happens if you have hundreds of accounts? So you have to do continuous compliance. Before you do continuous compliance, you must be able to collect all the information and all the logs. This is where, why in the first place in the account structure itself, we have a centralized logs account. 
Most importantly, if you want to collect all the cloud trail logs, these are all the APIs that's being used by individual users or resources. Uh, it tracks who, what, when, where, why, in terms of what they do on AWS resources. You want to collect VPC flow logs. This is where all the network traffic flow within, within the VPC itself. Um, uh, this is also used by guard duty. Next, we have AWS config. These are a configuration management tool uh, for all, all the resources that is provisioned in AWS. There's a timeline view for you to see um, what, when the resources is changed, what happens between that timeline itself. With all the logs being collected, now you're able to build rules. Let's say I want to have a rule such that all IAM users has to use 2FA. So if something happens, if some IAM users is not compliant, it will actually flag out to me. I want to track all the CloudWatch events. Let's say there's certain ports being opened, someone changed the ports, I want to know, I want to quickly remediate those events. And lastly, if you're mature enough, then you start using guard duty. Guard duty basically is a machine learning threat detection service that is it's a quick, very easy for, for you to use. It just click enable, it will just enable. It, it will take all the cloud trail logs, the um, VPC flow logs, and all the DNS query events. What it does, it will correlate with third party signatures and identify what are the potential um, so called uh, attacks. Shared services. So, some of the common shared services that we have uh, that you want to provision as well. Uh, one is directory. Um, it could be your existing directory, um, but most of the common time, most of the time, customers will have some sort of directory on AWS as well. And I think just like last week, we have launched directory services that is cross account access. So you have a centralized directory uh, that can be used by all your applications, automatic domain join, for example, it can be enabled through the directory services. Monitoring. We do have CloudWatch monitoring. But of course, there's a lot of times customers have their own monitoring, monitoring tool that they want to leverage on. So you want to build that in, into the baseline as well. Another thing is code repo. The code repo here is basically for about not so much of your application code, but more in terms of the infrastructure itself. You want to have a repo to collect all so-called help, enable versioning of all the infrastructure code that you have de developed. What has changed? As your business change, your baseline will change as well. Okay, sorry. And another thing is about Amazon Machine Image. Um, this is where you want to automate in terms of the creation of the hardened golden images. Because as we release updates to, for example, Amazon Linux, you want to automate <coughs> that process such that you take a new image, bake in all the whatever codes that you need or agents that you have to install to that image and spin up a new image such that you become a gold uh, hardened image. Next thing is automation. So with automation, we will have uh, something called cloud formation. This is basically uh, a common language as such that you can define your infrastructure as code, um, de defining all the resources that you have to provision to VPC, the subnets, what have you. Everything can be, can be so-called automated through the uh, cloud formation template. And stack sets basically allows you to extend the cloud formation stacks as such that you are able to create resources, uh, network infrastructure in multiple accounts. You can create, you can update the infrastructure, you can delete the infrastructure uh, through a single master account across all other AWS accounts. Once you have familiarized with the cloud formation, you want to, for example, to, uh, to so-called allow users to easily launch this infrastructure. So this is where you can publish your cloud formation templates into something called service catalog. Service catalog provides you with a so-called uh, a simple user interface as such that it's a one click, it will deploy all whatever resources that you define in your cloud formation templates um, so without your users have to come to you to build out the infrastructure itself. Next is the pipeline. You need a pipeline as such to all the process, define all the different steps that you need to do to baseline your account, okay? With that, um, I'm gonna show you a quick demo of what landing zone is. <coughs> okay. 
Okay, so this is the AWS console. Um, so AWS landing zone is nothing but uh, a, a lot of CloudFormation templates, um, Lambda functions. So typically, as you, as you go in, you, what it does, you build out an organization. This is where uh, the hierarchy of accounts that you will see. So for example, here I have a main master landing zone. I have a three different separate AWS accounts that's being created. One is for logging, the other for security, and one account for shared services. So these are the baseline. It is customizable, okay? The AWS Landing Zone solution is customizable. So depending on what you need, you can actually bake into that baseline itself as you provision the accounts. So within each account, there's some local service control policies. This is where you control in terms of what the users can do within that account. If you apply to a particular OU itself, whatever account that falls under that OU, we actually inherit those permissions. So for example, here, I have a policy that attaches full AWS access, but I also have another policy that uh, protect cultural conflict. That means that this will disable users in those accounts even if they have a full admin access to disable cultural or disable conflict, okay? So this is a simple overview of AWS organizations. You can see all the accounts that you have with an organization <clears throat> and define policies that you can actually attach to the different organizations, also got different uh, accounts. So once it's done, let me show you something that, for example, I mentioned earlier on about having a central um, uh, InfoSec account as such that you do not want to manage IAM users in different accounts. So what you want to do, you want to do enable cross account role access. So what it does, basically I have three different accounts that you have seen earlier on, the shared, security, and logging. So what I want to do, looking at it without me having to log in, to, to log out from this account, log into that account with a different IAM users, I can now actually cross account access using the same account, right? So what it does, I'm just assessing, so-called assuming a role within that account such that I can have full admin access. So, so for example here, and uh, uh, early on you also see that I might have an account that's for to centralize networking configuration. For example, I have a direct connect to on-prem and, and because of role segregation, I want to create an account that's specifically accessible by a network admin only, such that whatever direct connect requirements or, or creation of VIFs, you can actually uh, go through this particular network admin to control it. So for example here, I actually have a direct connect in this account. So, so pretty much, this is where you have a shared services. There's an active directory here as well. Right, so, so this is where you want to build your active directory as a common services and shared across account. So we have also launched directory service, um, which is part of organizations as such that if your directory service in your master um, account, all the subsequent accounts uh, that is so-called under that organization will be able to access that directory services. So as such, it is very easy for you to do like launch an EC2 for Windows and do a domain join to a central uh, AD account instead of having an individual AD account in, um, an in, individual AD in each account. Okay, right. So let's go back. So what I do, basically I just go to go back to my admin role in my previous account. Uh, as I mentioned earlier on, uh, no, just, as you mature with CloudFormation, you want to publish um, your IT services to, uh, to a service catalog. This will help your users to actually launch approved IT products. Uh, it could be from the marketplace. Uh, it could be a, a proof co network configuration that uh, based on certain company security policies. So they can actually go in here and launch the products. So for example, here, I have a centralized logging solution, which is part of uh, the template of the landing zone. So you can actually build up more solution and, and actually and include it as part of the landing zone, or you can expose it as an individual product. When you deploy your landing zone, you actually have a so-called something called account vending machine, right? This is where you provide information into this. As you launch this product, you provide information to this product uh, itself. It will speed up accounts. That's why it is called account vending machine. 
Okay. So you have a consistent way of provisioning accounts, standard way of baselining the accounts, what security posture that you need in those accounts, you can actually do that automatically. Right. So if there's any changes that you need to do, then you go back to the car formation stack sets, say I want to update all these accounts because my, my baseline has changed, I need to comply with certain governance policies, it will push out to all the accounts. So that's you have a central way of managing all accounts now. So, okay. So, any questions? Good. And how many of you have seen uh, Lending Zone? No? Really? Okay. So, uh, that's pretty much my demo. Um, let's see in terms of what are the next steps that you can take. The key thing is engage because Lending Zone is customers customizable solution. So at first, it's only available through um, by engaging the SA teams or the account teams. So now we actually publish it in, in AWS Answers. Uh, you can take a look at it. Uh, it's a very uh, key foundation that you need to look at as, as much as you start off with a single account today. This is something that you can actually plan for. Um, it, it's, it's not just for for customers with a lot of accounts. This is the best time that if you're starting off early, set your foundation right, and subsequently all the accounts um, is easy for you to manage. So with that, I thank you. Uh, lunch is coming up. I'm not stopping you guys. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Steve, for the insights. For those of you who would like a copy of his deck, you can approach Jane and Celeste at the front and back of the room to tap your smart badge to get a copy. Do also take a minute to fill out the session survey with the details on screen now and stand to win limited edition AWS swag. <laughs>